I'm Jeffrey. Uh, I'm a research engineer at Google. Um, and on the side, I love building side projects. I love building uh, little software tools uh, for myself and that sort of thing. And one thing I've been really enjoying recently is using LLMs within my development loop. Um, but calling an API for a model for prototyping toy projects can get pretty expensive. Um, or you might just be on a plane or a train or something and not have access to stable Wi-Fi uh, or internet. Uh, so I'm here today to show you a quick example of how you can use Gemma locally using the Llama CPP ecosystem. So Llama CPP is an open source inference framework that allows you to run large language models on your own machine. So it's hyper optimized for on device, especially for MacBooks. Um, it's written in C++ and has minimal dependencies, making it efficient and portable. It also su supports a wide range of popular open source uh, and, and open models uh, like Gemma and has a thriving tooling ecosystem built around it thanks to uh, a great uh, open source community. And we made it really easy to work with Gemma in Llama CPP by releasing the model on launch day in GGUF format. GGUF is a self-contained checkpoint format that's designed specifically to be used with Llama CPP. It bundles together all of the necessary information for loading and running a model in a single file, eliminating the need for any other configuration files. Uh, if you've worked with other checkpoints, um, types like tokenizer, JSON, that, that sort of thing. Uh, so it makes it very easy to use and share LLM models. Uh, you only need a single file to get started. Um, ours is hosted on Hugging Face, so you can grab it right there from the Hugging Face repo. And once you've downloaded it, it's very easy to get started as well, too. You can clone the Llama CPP uh, repository off GitHub and then build it. And then in one line, you can perform inference on the model right on your device. And so now let's dive a little bit deeper into a demo uh, of how you can actually use the model in your own environment. So before we start, before we, get in, uh, before we go into the demo itself, uh, I want to kind of preface this with, with a story. Uh, when I was writing this demo, um, I was trying to figure out what we should do here. Uh, I was thinking about the 11 hour flight that I had to take from the US West Coast over here. I thought about how the Wi-Fi might not be as good on the plane and I needed something to do to, to pass the time. Anyone here heard of the game Connections from, from New York Times, the mini game? Anyone? Yeah? Okay. we got some hands. All right. Cool. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's a really fun word puzzle game where uh, they give you a bunch of words and, and you're trying to figure it out. But the point is, is that it's I'm addicted to it. I'm, I'm obsessed with it right now. And um, I want to play it more than once a day. It only drops once a day. So today, what we're going to do, if we can switch to the laptop now, um, we're going to try to build a portion... Uh, of this using Gemma. And so for the uninitiated, Connections looks like this. This is m my very minimal version of it that I've built uh, locally on, the, on my laptop here. Um, you're given 16 words, and you're trying to find four patterns where four words match into the pattern, uh, and no word can be used twice, uh, and, and every word has to, yeah, and no word can go unused. And so in this case, maybe a match would be Lawsuit, action, claim, and complaint. Those are all legal words. Okay, correct. Awesome. I got it right. Oh, I was worried about that. Um, so, <laughs> so on the back end, how this actually looks right now is very not complicated. I have all of the, the solutions hard-coded. <laughs> um, I can add more puzzles, but then it's just like kind of a test of my memorization skills as opposed to my word association skills, maybe. Um, and so what we're going to do today, we're going to do a little part of this project uh, where we're going to try to get it so that it's not fetching the connections from the disk, things that I'm writing, uh, and instead fetching from Gemma, uh, hopefully with solutions that I don't understand so I can figure them out. So first of all, let's jump over to setting up the model. So I'm going to set up the model in, uh, in an interface. Is the text big enough there? No? OK. Sorry, give me one second. I'm gonna... Cool. Um, 
I've already preloaded the model in there. You can see at the top, there's, I think that's just a bit of a UI glitch. The model is loaded into RAM on this MacBook right now. Uh, and I'm using a, I'm using this interface called LM Studio. On the back end, it's still using Llama CPP, uh, but I thought this would just be nicer to, to show in this demo environment. Uh, and so what we could do first is we can just write a quick prompt just to make sure everything's working. Write a poem about Python 3. Okay, cool. So I want to emphasize that this is running on this computer, and this is this is like a MacBook that you can just buy at the Apple Store. It's not this special computer or anything. Um, and what's cool about this interface is we have this nice chat interface that formats everything, and we we, we could show it real nicely. Um, but at the same time, we also have the ability to set up the same model loaded into RAM as a model server instead and access it programmatically. So this will bec become a bit important later, and we'll go back to this. Do we have a beautiful poem? We do. Awesome. So this works. But let's not get distracted. Let's go back to the task at hand. So I've written down here a series of patterns and words that I've seen in past connections puzzles. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to use these as part of the prompt to try to get Gemma to generate more. So let's make sure. So let's just say, let's let's tell Gemma, below are a series of patterns and words that fit those patterns. And then we'll say, generate four more patterns and four words for each. And we'll see what that does. <laughs> There we go. Okay, cool. Uh, so we're generating patterns pretty well, and I think some of those are they might be a little bit easy, but but it's doing it. It's it, it's doing it correctly, and it looks like it's generating uh, things that I wouldn't expect. Maybe that last one is, is interesting. Um, so so th th this is good. This is awesome. But since we want to access it programmatically, we want to hook it up to the front end. Maybe we want to put it in a format that's a little bit more friendly for programming. So why don't we go back up here and we'll double click. And we'll get us. We'll, we'll we'll put it in JSON. We'll, we'll um, generate four words for each in a JSON format, and we'll edit the prompt like that. And then we'll go ahead and regenerate that. Oh, and it looks like we're successfully generating in JSON, uh, and that's really good. And so one thing I want to emphasize here, as we're watching this generate, um, is that. What's important is that there's a lot of this going on as you're building something like this, right? Um, <laughs> so there's a lot of like noodling about when you're uh, when, when you're building a prompt uh, to use a model in your app, and so you're doing this a lot. Um, and if you're if you're calling an API for this, um, it can get expensive. You you might be disincentivized to kind of use it because you, you're paying money for each call. And so with a local model, you're able to iterate really quickly and for free, it's just on the computer. And so what I'm going to do here is, uh, I'm not gonna bore you with me iterating over this prompt a little bit more, but you might iterate a couple more times and end up with a prompt that looks like this. It might look like this. <laughs> and so we're gonna paste it in, I'll explain. So this is a prompt where I've, I've actually only worked at it for about five minutes or so, uh, just changing certain things. In this case, I'm purposely, um, I'm, I'm purposely telling the model that I want things in JSON by formatting all of the examples in JSON instead of mentioning it at the bottom. And I've added a couple extra things at the bottom just to make sure we're taking care of that extra verbosity. Um, and so we'll give that a run. As we can see here, it looks like we're able to we're able to generate some interesting patterns here. Um, and I can generate this a couple times. And you'll note that while we have a couple of different examples, it's pretty robust in that it always generates in the same format. And this will take a little bit of tweaking to do. And that's what I've done behind the scenes um, uh, with this prompt. Um, but uh, we, can get, we, we can get to somewhere where we can use in the API. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take all of this, and we're going to start up our server as we and this is going to be the same exact model that's loaded into RAM. Now we're going to switch back to our code, and we're going to try to use this fetch connections from Gemma. We're going to put our prompt right here. 
And then we're going to pass this into this function and now call Gemma instead. We're going to save it. And now when we refresh the page, we're loading because we are generating, we're generating the patterns right here. And again, I want to say, this is a normal laptop. You know, there's no trickery behind it. We're generating the tokens on this laptop. And when it's done generating, I can go back to my game and I have a brand new game. And I can just do this as many times as I want. What's most important that you should take away is that now I have unlimited games and I'm not. Yeah. Uh, anyways, no, the important thing that we want to take away from this is that when you have a model that can run in local development, it really unlocks a lot of things that you can try um, because you're no longer bound by calling an external server that might be, might be expensive, might be tedious. Um, and you can also use a model, use the model 7B on this computer. Um, it, it, it's a very good model that you can also deploy. So now you can do a one-to-one -one local environment with your prod environment and um, any anyone who's developed a, any number of apps will tell you that 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 is the best thing to have um, and so i'm i'm very happy to very happy that we're able to run this like this and i'm very curious to see what everyone builds with this